So hi, hi everybody. I hope you are doing well. Today I'm going to show you how to create your REST IPE production environment using React.js, Node.js, and MongoDB. And for the orchestration, for for container orchestration, we'll use Kubernetes. So today we'll you we will create a pipeline for our React.js or for our REST IP application for Node.js and for React.js using Jenkins and Ansible and for deployment we'll use, do, do, we'll use Docker and for the orchestration of our containers we'll use Kubernetes and we'll learn all of this on our EC2 instance in our AWS account and here there will be an intermediate between the, the, two, the two steps when we will deploy from our localhost Ansible server localhost to our Kubernetes cluster, we will use Docker Hub. Every time when we when we will make change in our either in React JS or Node JS project, Jenkins will build our project, create an artifact and send it to our Ansible server. Then Ansible server server will create images and push them to Docker Hub. Then Kubernetes will retrieve that push it images and try to run them and run our our race IP architecture right so let us go to demo to see how these things are working but before going to the to, 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 the, to our AWS account and create instance and run all this let me give you an overview about what we are going to achieve so here an overview about what we are going to achieve, right? So we will use Nginx, and in our Nginx, we will copy the artifact of the build of React.js, right? In this directory, then we will use Node.js containers or deployments, then a Mongo DB database deployment. And for and we will forward each deployment with a service, so we can make any application accessible by the other one. And in this lab, we will use two types of services. We will use cluster IP services and the node the node port service. The cluster IP service enable us to export our application only within or inside our cluster so it will be not accessible from the outside it will be accessible only from within the the cluster and for the node port we will expose our application outside so can any, anyone see it and uh, can access to it using the node port and we can forward because clients cannot remember this port of our of our website so it's better to forward the application with the load balancer that listen on the default port of HTTP the port 80 so we will forward our EC2 instance with a load balancer then this load balancer will forward the request to our port on the EC2 instance then this one will forward it to Nginx and we can see our application so let us go to our AWS account and create this lab that contain a lot of stuff and it is it is very useful and I, I suggest you and, and I, rec I highly recommend it to see all the videos of, of this lab because this is here I will create or I will achieve the, the production in, in environment where I will use volumes for MongoDB so we can maintain and and preserve our data so we can we don't lose it even if the if the pod is shut down or or stop it so let us go to our aws account and create this this lab and or this architecture so at first i will go to my ec2 labs and the first thing that i will do is i will create a jenkins web server so i will launch an instance in this lab i will use ubuntu for for Jenkins and the same thing for Kubernetes cluster because we will use kube EDM 
and if you go to the Kubernetes documentation and see, you will see that only CentOS and Ubuntu is the recommended uh, distribution of Linux for running a QBD modem. So we'll go down here and run our Ubuntu server. And here we'll go to the configuration. As long as we will we will build our artifact for ReactJS, so we have to to, to have a high compute and memory. So it's better to not go with the with the default or with the free tier configuration of our EC2 instance. But instead of that, we have to go with an advanced configuration. Let us show this configuration that we have for v vcpu and and 16 gigabyte configure instance we will launch only one instance at storage and add a tag and here give it name jenkins server and for security group i will open the port 8080 because it is the default port of jenkins 8080 and accessible from everywhere there you can change it by your ip your public ip address you can go to the website and and discover what is your ip address and paste it here so only you you can you, you can access to this, this ec2 instance for the security reason otherwise you can keep it accessible from everywhere because this 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 is instance we will shut it down once the once we will finish the lap launch then i will use this key pair and launch this in in this lab we we we, we, we use the vpc the default vpc but you can create your own vpc if you want to to see how to create a vpc in aws you can check check my previous videos on my channel youtube so i create jenkins and then now i have to, to make an ssh connection to it using my box term ssh copy paste the public ip address of my ec2 instance using the user ubuntu and for the key pair i will use ps demo and then OK. So let me go down here and I will open the project. This project, this project you you will you can find it in my GitHub repository. This this project. Mm, combine all the labs that I have achieved previously about uh, about Docker Compass, about uh, uh, how to to use Docker Compass, how to use configuration of, of engine, etc. So as you can see, the recommended RAM is four gigabytes, and same thing for the VP, VCPU. So let me run this command. Let me install it. Java. You can either copy this line by line, or you can create a shell script here and copy it, paste it all the file, all the all the comments, and run it. Paste here. Sorry. 